Welcome into the channel everyone. Today we are going to learn how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Welcome to how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! number two. So in the last video of the series I talked about what you need to play Yu-Gi-Oh! But now we're going to actually talk about how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So the first thing I know you guys are wondering as well, I want to attack my opponent. I want to deal damage and I want to win. Well, how do I do that? Well, the most popular way of doing that is summoning monsters. So, how do you summon? So, for your average player, their normal summon is going to look like this. They're going to say, normal summon. Now, you only get one normal summon per turn. But, there is a card called double summon that lets you normal summon again. Isn't that amazing? Normal summoning is so strong, it needs another card. The highest level that you can normal summon just by itself is level 4. So level 4 on down, you don't need any tributes to normal summon it. But what about if you, you know, what if you want to normal summon, you know, level 5 or level 6 or level 7? Well, to normal summon these guys, you already need at least one tribute on the field. Now, sadly, you can't go normal summon and then tribute to normal summon because you only get one normal summon per turn. Now, is a tribute summon the same as a normal summon? Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Uh, the only difference with a tribute summon is that you are using your normal summon that turn to tribute monsters you already control to normal summon a larger monster. Uh, people actually used to do this a lot with Obelisk the Tormentor. Um, with, with decks that didn't need their normal summon, they would spam out a bunch of things, and if their combo got stopped, they would tribute everything for an Obelisk. Like, that's, eh, that's, that's pretty cool. Big brain text right there. So there's normal summoning. You can normal summon once per turn up to level four. Anything over that, you need at least one monster on the field to tribute summon. Now, what if I want a special summon, you know, like a blue eyes, for example? Well, if you want to normal summon a blue eyes, there's a couple things you have to do. So level fives and sixes only need one tribute, but everything level seven and up needs two tributes. So if you want to normal summon your Dark Magician or your Blue-Eyes White Dragon, you've got to have two monsters on the field to tribute for that. Which is why special summoning is such an awesome mechanic. Now, how do we special summon? That depends on the card. So before we get into it, one tribute for five and six, and two tributes to normal summon seven, eight, or higher monsters. Even if it's a level 12 monster in the deck, you only need two monsters to tribute summon for its normal summon. Okay, cool. So we feel like normal summonings, we, we've got that down. There's not, not too much to it. But what about special summoning? You know, if you only get one normal summon, that's not going to be enough to kill your opponent usually. Well, you're right. Because if you really want to, like, deal some damage to your opponent, you're going to have to special summon. So, one way to special summon is through card effect. So right here, I have Righty Driver. Now, Righty Driver says, after its first effect, if this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one Lefty Driver from your hand or deck or graveyard, you can only use this effect once per turn. So this is really cool because you can normal summon Righty Driver. Man, I thought I had this already. Just bumping up my editing time here, I guess. Ooh, that's a so you can normal summon Righty Driver. Now, this is a when effect, or this is an if effect. So, if this card is normal summoned, you can. You have to do this on summon. So you go normal summon righty driver, effect of righty driver, 
Special summon the lefty driver from the deck, hand, or graveyard. So that's pretty cool. So we just special summoned. Easy way to do it. Super easy way to do it. There's also magic and trap cards that special summon. And we'll get into those in a bit. So this is really cool. So now we've got two monsters on the field for the price of one normal summon. Looks like we can do a combo. Well, Lefty Driver has this cool effect that it turns itself into a level three. So we are gonna make our Lefty Driver here a level three monster. And there's a dice, make him level three. So this is gonna lead into our next type of summoning, which is Synchro Summoning. So there are a lot of powerful Synchro Monsters in the game. Uh, one of them is Herald of Arclight. If you've been to any kind of tournaments or you've done a lot of plays online, you've probably seen this card. This card is really good because it doesn't let anything from your hand or your deck go to graveyard. It gets banished instead. And that screws up a lot of people, which is why he's such a popular card right now. He's also an Omni Negate, which means that if your opponent activates a spell trap or monster effect, he tributes himself to the graveyard and then negates that effect and destroys it. Pretty powerful card. Um, if this is on field, usually it's not a good time for your other opponent. So how do we get into this guy? Well, if you see right here, he has four levels. With Synchro Summons, you have to use monsters, including at least one tuner, to Synchro Summon into the correct number of levels. So let's see what we have on field. Well, we have Righty Driver, who is a tuner, how convenient. And then we have Lefty Driver. Ah, but he's only level two. Ah, but wait, we turned him into a level three because of his effect. So we actually have in total four levels on the field right now. So we can announce this to your opponent, Synchro for four, Herald. Now we have a Herald on the field. So for the price of one normal summon, we now have a Floodgate, Omni Negate on the board. That seems pretty strong, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. So that's pretty cool. So that is Synchro Summoning and Normal Summoning. Now, I know another popular one that you guys have seen is Link Summoning. So I have right here Salamangrate Almirage. This is a pretty good card. Um, on your opponent's turn, it contributes itself to protect a card on uh, protect a monster on your field from destruction once. Um, it's a nice card and it's good for combos. So one combo that I like to run is with Plague Spreader. Uh, Plague Spreader Zombie is a really popular card right now because he can bring himself back from the grave for the cost of setting a card from your hand on the top of the deck. So he's really cool. What does that have to do with Link Summoning? Well, I'll show you. So let's start off by Normal Summoning Plague Spreader Zombie. Cool. Now, how do we Link Summon? Well, same way you Synchro Summon, basically. You would take it off the field as material, so you're basically tributing it for the special summon of your Link Monster. Now, how do you know what monster your Link Monster needs? Well, if you look right down here, right below the type and attribute, there we go, you will see that Almirage needs one normal summoned monster with 1,000 or less attack. Okay, does Plague Spreader Zombie fit that description? I did normal summon him, and he only has 400 attack, so yeah. I can use Plague Spreader Zombie to go into Almirage, which is a really good play because of what I'm going to do next. So you're still basically tributing your monster off the field for the special summon of another monster. So we've normal summoned zombie, plague spreader zombie. We're going to tribute him off for the summon material for Almirage. Cool. But now we can use plague spreader's effect in grave, and we can take a card from our hand, put it on top of the deck, to bring him back out on the field. So this is really cool. Now we have two monsters for the price of one normal summon. Seems really good, right? 
Well, yeah, it actually is. Because this is actually a great way to kind of keep going into more and more monsters and do bigger and bigger combos. So one monster that I'm sure you guys have seen and that I'm sure you absolutely hate right now is Needle Fiber. Yes, or Crystron Halcophyrex. Um, he's really cool because he summons another monster when he's summoned. So you have three, basically, three monsters on the field now. So, what we can do here is look at his Link Summoning Requirements. Um, he needs two monsters, including a tuner. We do have two monsters on the field, and one of them is a tuner. So, we can tribute these guys off for the special summon of Halcophyrax. Now, Halcophyrax's effect is, if this card is Link Summoned, you can special summon a level 3 or lower tuner from your hand or deck in defense position. That's awesome. So, but it also says it cannot activate its effects this turn. That just means on the field, so if it leaves Grave and comes back, it can activate its effects again. So this is really cool. So we've Link Summoned twice. We're going into Halka Fibrax. We'll use his effect. We will Special Summon another Zombie Plague Spreader from the deck. So this is awesome. So now we have um, two monsters on the field. One of them is a Link 2, which counts for three monsters. So now that we have three monsters on the field, I'll explain to you something that uh, some people think is a little bit confusing. So if we look carefully at our cards here, we can see that down here, Halka Fibrax has a link rating of two. That means you need at least two monsters to summon it. You can also find that here below his type. He says two monsters. Cool. Now. We can summon a Link 3 with these, even though we don't have three monsters. This still counts as two. So we can go in Nightmare Unicorn because Nightmare Unicorn says, Nightmare Unicorn says two monsters, two plus monsters, so it still needs three, two plus monsters with different names. So that's pretty cool. So we have a two and we have one, so that makes three and they both have different names, so we can link these off to summon our Nightmare Unicorn. So that's pretty cool. So those are the basic summoning requirements of Link Monsters. Um, just make sure you read their text right below their type and effect name, because that's going to give you uh, the types of material that you need to have to link summon them. Cool. So we've gone through synchros, links, and normal summons. What about the other OG ways to summon, like fusion summoning? Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, fusion summoning is pretty cool. So let's do a little bit of that. So usually, you would have to have polymerization, and then the monsters that you need either in your hand or on your field. Now there are a ton, a ton of different polymerization cards. And let me make sure this is still recording. Awesome. One of the most popular polymerization cards right now is Red Eyes Fusion. Because this summons this, and this is a big boy. So. All of the details to how to fusion summon are basically on these two cards. So you'll need your fusion card that can fusion summon the monster you want, and your monster, and the materials. So fusion summoning is a bit harder. It takes a few more resources to accomplish. Now, Red Eyes Dragoon says, um, Dark Magician plus Red Eyes Dark Red Eyes Black Dragon or one Dragon Effect Monster. So that's pretty cool. As long as you have Dark Magician and a Dragon Effect Monster, you can fusion summon this card. That's pretty cool. 
Now, the card that we're using to fusion summon it is Red Eyes Fusion, which says, you can fusion summon one fusion monster that lists Red Eyes, a Red Eyes monster as material from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand, deck, or field as fusion material. So this is a really cool card because you can just straight up have all of these in your deck, just have this in your hand, but you can still be like, fusion summon, send those materials to the graveyard, and bring out the big boy. So this card is really strong right now because this card is really strong. So really, with fusion summoning, all you need is your fusion spell, and then have the materials where it says to have them. So if I just had polymerization, polymerization says you can fusion summon one monster using materials in your hand or field for cost. So if I have Dark Magician and Red Eyes on my field, I can use a regular polymerization, fusion them away for Red Eyes Dragoon. It's, it's a pretty easy concept, but it's just a little harder to accomplish, uh, just because it requires things to be in certain places. But fusion summoning is still super cool. Now, one card that you can use to kind of cheat out the fusion summoning is actually a link monster. So this is actually one of my favorite link monsters right now. His name is Verte, Predaplant Verte Anaconda. He is a Link 2. You can make him with any two effect monsters. And he says, uh, he has two effects, but we just care about the fusion summoning one. So you can pay 2,000 life points, send one fusion or polymerization, normal or quick play spell from your deck to the graveyard, and then fusion, and then this card's effect becomes that card's effect. So. If we can link into him, all we have to do is pay 2,000 life points. We can send the Red Eyes Fusion to the graveyard. His effect becomes the Polymerization effect. So then we send these guys from our deck to the grave, and we bring out Dragoon. Now this is really cool, and it's super easy to accomplish. How? <laughs> Why, with one of our fantastic normal summons, that's how. So we can normal summon left righty driver, use his effect, special summon lefty driver. These are two effect monsters, so we can link them off for Verte Anaconda. Pay 2,000 life points. Be -de 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 -ding. Send our red eyes fusion to grave, and then send our materials to special summon out Dragoon. Now Dragoon is really cool because he's an Omni Negate, he can negate anything once per turn, and then he gains a thousand attack. So for the cost of one normal summon and two thousand life points, you can have a negate on the board that doesn't get targeted, doesn't get destroyed, and beefs itself up every turn. How cool is the game of Yu-Gi-Oh right now? When you can basically run all three of the OG monsters in the same deck, and it comes out pretty cool. So that is fusion summoning. Pretty cool. It's a little bit of a pseudo link right now, but you guys get the picture. Next, one of my absolute favorite types of summoning is XYZ, or I'll just say XZ summoning. So this is really cool. So the rank of the card is 10, which usually means you need a couple level 10 monsters to XYZ summon it. Now XYZ summoning is a little bit different from every other kind of summoning because the monsters you use for it don't go to grave. So this card says you need two level 10 monsters. Okay, we can do that. I've got two level 10s right here. Got two Elblitz the Golden Lord. Now when you XZ summon, you need usually two cards of the same level and then it'll tell, you know, two level 10 monsters, or two level 10 light monsters, two level 10 dark monsters, two level 10 Mayakashi monsters. It'll tell you right below its name. Just make sure you read your cards. I know, that's the hardest part of the game is reading the cards. So cool, so we have two level 10s on the field right now. How do we get this? Where does this go? Well, 
To XYZ summon, you simply stack your two same level cards on top of each other, and then stack the XYZ monster on top of them. It's weird, right? I know. So at this point, they're not on the field anymore. They are material for this card's effect. Yes, XYZ monsters need to detach material to activate their card effects. So Super Dreadnought Whale Cannon Gustav Max says that you once per turn, you can detach one material from this card and inflict 2,000 damage to your opponent. Cool. So when you want to do that, you can say like, activate his effect. And then you can choose which material you want to discard. Yeah, we'll do that one. And then BOOM! Your opponent takes 2,000 damage. How cool is that? Awesome. Same way with rank 4s, 3s, 5s, 6s, 8s, 9s. All of that good stuff. They have, they have to detach material to activate their card effects. Some of their effects are pretty cool. So that is XYZ summoning. Pretty, pretty easy. Um, just two monsters of the same level to whatever rank you're trying to XYZ summon. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's, it's really easy. It's basically a normal summon. <laughs> so that's really cool. But now you're saying, Skalic, what if I just want to summon out just like a big fat monster? Like I just want to summon out a big monster and just like attack, but I don't want a normal summon. Well, let me tell you, Duelist, there is a card for you. And that card's name is Alpha, the Master of Beasts. So this card and Pancratops, the Dino Wrestler, are really close kindred spirits. So, so Pancratops would say, if your opponent has more monsters than you do, you can special summon it. Alpha says, if your opponent has more attack power than you do, you can special summon him. So his full, let's read his full effect real quick. So his full effect is, cannot be normal summoned, that one is important, cannot be normal summoned or set, must first be special summoned from your hand, while the total attack of all monsters your opponent controls is more than that of all monsters you control. So what does that mean? Well, if my opponent has Herald of the Arclight on his field. And I am going second. I draw my first card. It's Alpha. My board has no attack. He has 600 attack. Therefore, we meet the summoning requirements of Alpha because he does have more attack than I do. So I can just straight up summon Alpha. That is so cool. Now, what if my opponent has, you know, two monsters on the board. Let's say he, I stopped his combo, he's got, he's got a Nightmare Unicorn, and he's got a Herald of the Arclight on the field. Well, check this out. This card is absolutely amazing. So, with Alpha, so we've got 2,800 total attack here, so I can special summon Alpha right from my hand for free, no question. That is, that's what happens. I just get to special summon him. How cool is going second in this day and age, you know? So the rest of his effect is, you can target any number of beast, beast warrior, or winged beast monsters you control. He is a beast, so he counts. Return them to the hand, then return face-up monsters your opponent controls to the hand, equal to the number of cards that you return to your hand. So the strategy is you can special summon alpha for free, use his effect, return him to hand, and then you can sh return, uh, let's return this guy. You can return one of these from the, from the field to their hand, which is super cool. But now listen to this, he still has more attack power than I do, so I can still drop alpha again because his summoning requirement is not once per turn. Honestly, this is like my favorite card right now. So it's so cool because his effect to bounce is once per turn, but his effect to special summon is not once per turn. So you can indeed special summon him again and attack over the Nightmare Unicorn. Super cool, super cool. Now you might be asking me, but wait, Skalic, you sent his Herald from the field to his hand. 
So he has an extra deck monster in his hand now? No. When extra deck monsters get sent from the field to the hand or from the field to the deck, they always go into the extra deck because extra deck monsters cannot, they say live, extra deck monsters cannot live in your hand or main deck. So these get spun right back to the extra deck and they have to be summoned out of the extra deck again if you want to summon them. So that's a really cool thing that you guys would need to know. Um, if you're doing like a compulsory evacuation, which is a good trap, you can target one monster, spin it back into the hand. If it's an extra deck monster, it goes right back into the extra deck. Because that is the only place where extra deck monsters can live. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was really informative on the types of summonings that you can do. Um, if you really want to expand your knowledge on this, I would say you can look at a couple of my combo tutorials. I've got a bunch from a bunch of different people running a bunch of different decks. And if you watch those enough, you're really going to get a good handle on why summoning and link summoning and monster summoning is so much fun and so important in the game. And if you guys want to support the channel or get some stuff to play with, you can get these awesome Scalic YGO dice. It's really cool. It's a six-sided die. It's got a, it's got a Dragon Ball one star for the one. Um, I like them. They've got a nice feel. Rounded corners. They roll really well. I like them a lot. Um, if you want to get some of these so you can uh, play the game and show your friends how cool you are, then you can check out my eBay store down in the description along with the merch store. But, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Again, I hope this helped you out. We're going to go over some awesome stuff in the next video. See ya. Bye. Bye.